Hey, what's up? This is Laidback Luke, DJ and producer. It's the vlog of vlogs. The answer to what you've all been waiting for from me for months. No more denim. Make it work. 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 Make it work. I will give you a thorough answer very soon, but first let me get some questions out of the way. Are you back with Pioneer? No, I'm not. And personally, this wouldn't at all make sense to me. You'll see why in this video. And before we dive into all of this head first, let me address some of the passionate comments in my latest unboxing vlog. I do believe if you're writing these things, there are two things. Number one, you have become somewhat jaded by the world out there, and I get it. I have that too. Who can you trust nowadays? And when are you not sold something that you don't want and don't need, right? Number two, you don't know me and you don't know what I'm about. So let's immediately address the elephant in the room and get that out of the way. I have never ever been paid to play on a product. Does that mean there were no deals with say Pioneer, Denon and Reloop? I did do deals with these brands, but specifically there was never anything in any of my contracts that said I'm obligated to actually play on the product or brand that I was an ambassador for. Most importantly, I will always use the best possible tools for my DJ craft. If anything, whenever I enter a contract with a brand, part of my agreement is that I am involved with the research and development to optimize with what DJs really want and need in a product. I've been endorsed while being with Pioneer, AKA getting free gear and Pioneer providing sponsorship for some events. Yes, I've been paid by Denon and now I'm being paid by Reloop. But what do they get in return? I'll actively give them my expertise in terms of R&D and many of you will see me DJing on their gear on my socials. I have a name and I have a reputation. I will act as an ambassador for the brand. This is very valuable. And so like you are valuable in your job and getting paid for it, the same goes for me and a brand that I love. And now here's the key, a brand that I love. I would never push anything that I don't love or believe in. But then Luke, did you fall out of love with Denon? Um, yeah sort of stick around because it will all unfold soon when it comes to these deals it's important to understand that i will only use what i love and i won't use what i don't love again regardless of whether i'm being paid by that brand or not i would never want to be limited by being tied to a deal while there is gear out there that allows me a much better performance what's really important to me is that i'm a fan of the brand first and foremost just like i'm still a fan of the art of djing and if I can make a deal to push that product as long as I love it, then great. When I don't love a product anymore, I will stop using it and naturally will not continue to endorse it nor promote it. Does that make any sense? I can imagine you're having thoughts or questions already. And I also would love to see a discussion going on in the comments. So feel free to leave something down below. So I sort of fell out of love with Denon, but why? See, here's the thing in this particular case, Denon's road led into a very different direction than where my vision was heading. So at that point, it's no longer an option to continue a commercial collaboration for me because personally that my dear viewers, that right there wouldn't be genuine anymore. Here's the real reason I am always looking for innovation. When I fell in love with dance music in the nineties, it was futuristic. It was electronic music. It was music made with the help of computers and computers were paving the way forward for us. Now, granted, we only had vinyls to express this type of futuristic music, but that was one of the reasons I actively was on the forefront to swap out all the Technics SL 1200 vinyl players in the clubs for the first pioneer CDJs. Back then one could say I fell out of love with techniques and I fell out of love with DJing with vinyl. Tick, 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 it was Pioneer that approached me back then, and although I thought it was quirky switching from DJing with vinyls to CDs, I said, screw it, let's try it. So Pioneer put a nice little set of their first ever CDJ gear in my studio, and I started testing it, and whoa! Truthfully, I was utterly blown away by it. Wow, it kind of felt like vinyl, and it operated the same way, but now I had loops and cue points and no skipping needles. 
and now I could bring way more tracks to the show without carrying such a heavy load of music. A CD folder was way lighter than a crate full of records. That sort of thing. And trying to get the vinyl players out of the club wasn't easy. Can you imagine a world where Technique's vinyl players are the club standard and the standard image of a real DJ was someone playing with vinyl? That's what I went up against. In 2003, I announced at a huge festival in the Netherlands at Dance Valley Festival on national TV. It was then and there they asked me why I switched and I said, I can see DJing with CDs is the future. And the amount of hate unleashed on me was incredible. People didn't see it. People couldn't believe it. Were CDJs really the future of DJ? Well, the rest, as they say, is history. But this is the vlog where I'm supposed to answer to why I left Denon and for you to decide if I am a sellout or not. So let's go from Pioneer to Denon now. I had a great time in history with Pioneer, a great relationship, and I always enjoyed doing my live sets for Pioneer DJ sounds, which are still being used as DJ tutorials throughout various DJ schools in the world. I had a good 15 years with Pioneer, pushing CDJs and their new product until Denon knocked on my door. They told me that they were developing media players, completely leaving out the CD part of their players, and that they were taking the DJ thing next level. Initially, I wasn't interested because I was happy with Pioneer and it had become the DJ standard. But wait, Denon, that actually sounded futuristic. Indeed, Denon said, you might enjoy a bunch of our features. I agreed to let them put a setup in my studio and I started experimenting with it. Do you see the pattern there? And that setup, wow, it was futuristic. The multiple players on one deck, the full touch screen, the no emergency loop, but an emergency track, the eight hot cue buttons. I was thoroughly impressed and I immediately became a fan. And that's where the turning point always is for me. If I go to sleep and I can only think of new ways to perform to my crowd using this new gear, it becomes an obsession and I want to ignite you with my enthusiasm as well. And as stated earlier, I'm a valuable asset to a company, so, we made a deal. I really enjoyed my Denon setup and shout out to all you Denon warriors out there. More power to you and by all means stick to the setup you love. The Prime 4, what a beast. I still love it. There were pros and cons to my Denon journey like us struggling with having enough equipment available for promoters in certain markets, but that's something for a future video. So if you didn't do already, make sure to like this video and subscribe and hit that notification bell as well to not miss out on the things I'm about to reveal. But about four years in, I came across this video by Crossfader and shout out to Crossfader for them staying consistent and working hard throughout all these years. Has this brand new AI technology just changed the DJ industry forever? This new technology developed by Algorithm DJ, they've just developed some new artificial intelligence technology that could change the way we mix forever. My mind was absolutely blown. Wait, how is this even possible? What kind of magic is this? And wait, it's an app? In all of my decades of DJing, I needed to compute this for a moment. There it was, the future of DJing right in front of my face. I started experimenting with it and I first started trying to connect it to my Denon setup, which we found a workaround, not at all handy to connect, but I got it to work and I kept DJing like this for a good year or so. Meanwhile, I was pushing Denon to implement the DJ Pro AI app user interface into their screens like they have with Serato, but, and I was also pushing for STEM use in the Denon environment, but at a certain point, Denon's development and mine didn't align anymore. And the gear that seamlessly connects with DJ Pro AI is Reloop. It doesn't matter what it is, if it says Reloop, it can connect to my phone and I'm able to DJ off of my app. And so when my Denon contract ended, I started to really embrace my new setup publicly. I've always been in love with innovation. And for me, the next step is Reloop in combination with Algorithms DJ Pro AI app. I've been a professional DJ for over 25 years now. Can you imagine that? By now I could easily stick with, say, Pioneer. Ride the wave, not make it too, too complicated for myself and ride it all the way into my retirement and avoid some of the negative comments and pushback. But sorry, 
That is not how I function. That is not how I'm wired. This fire, this passion for DJing and innovation, I still have it. Just like the beginning of the 2000s when we started ditching the techniques SL1200, where we are currently at, it feels exactly the same to me. I'm going to end this vlog and hopefully plant a seed for you to be open to change. And you'll hear me saying this, in many more videos to come. It starts right here. So think about this. We're doing Zoom meetings on our phones. We order our food, hotels, and airline tickets. And when we drive, we have the GPS on our phones. We communicate through it. We even find love through this device. Why, my dear viewers, why can't we DJ from our phones? That's the essence. The future of real DJing is here. Make sure to keep an eye on this channel I'm Laidback Luke, catch you back here for the next one. Until then, Elza.